Hey guys, what is up? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com. Welcome to another episode of Codecademy Python tutorial series. This is part 21. So I'm really bad with this numbers thing. It's actually part 22. So where did we leave off last time? We left off covering uh, while loops, okay? And we covered all of this, all the way up to your own else while, and we finished all of that. So let's go just take a little peek at our course page. Just uh, check where we are. Oh, they changed that on us. While we were in the middle of working on it, they changed the entire interface on us. So here it is. Here are the loops. And we are at 42% of this and we're past the 60% barrier. Nice. Let's click on this loops and let's keep going. So now we're gonna work with for loops. I enjoy for loops much more than while loops. I did used to like while loops a lot till I started using for loops a lot and now I just enjoy them. Most of the times you can use for loops and they, they're easier to work with and they will do what you wanna do. Also, a lot of the times with while loops, you have to be careful and make a condition that stops. For for loops, that's never the case. You have to give it that thing to stop. And here we just say run 10 times. This is pretty much saying that because range 10 gives you this list, right? We've talked about how range is a function that generates a list on the fly. So it gives you this, i is zero the first time right i zero the first time then it's one then it's two and it prints out zero one two three four five six seven eight uh, each time so let's go back and then as soon as it runs out of the list it stops right so they want us to make sure that we print out 10 so here what do they want us to do make the loop print the numbers from zero to 19 instead of zero to nine so it should do zero to 19 which means that i should really do 20 because zero is included, because we start from zero, and 20 is excluded, but 19 is included, right? We go up to 20, but not including 20. That's the general convention. And here we have counting zero to 19, perfect. For your hobbies, this, is, this kind of loop is useful when you want to do something a certain number of times, such as append something to a list. So again, for loops are really useful. We just keep looping through, keep appending the thing to the list, and that way our list keeps getting bigger. So we're gonna keep appending things. So I can do create a for loop that prompts the user for a hobby three times and appends each one of those hobbies. Okay, they want us to get our hands dirty now, so they want us to do something. So we're gonna say, um, all right, so hobby is equal to raw, input what is uh, your favorite right what is or what is one of your what is your hobby <laughs> what are your hobbies sorry I'm, I'm uh, really caring about the user interface of this what is your hobby so let's just make it simple and we got that, so that'll give us a string, and then what we want to do is we want to ask this three times, so that'll be a part of a for loop, for i in range three, because we already know we need to run three times. Are we gonna use this i? No, so I'm just gonna make it that underscore, because I don't think we're gonna be using that variable. We just want to run this loop three times, and I'm gonna say hobbies.append hobby, okay? And then ultimately I can say print hobbies. What is your hobby? Hobby is um, soccer. Another hobby is lifting. And what is another hobby? Let's see. I, I went skydiving, but that's not a hobby because I did it once and it was pretty fun, scary at the same time. That was two months ago, that was amazing. Hmm, let me think of another good hobby that I like to do. So I have also started jiu-jitsu. That's been amazing. I love it. Let's put that. 
And here, you got that list. Soccer, lifting, jiu-jitsu. This U is ignored by Python. It's just there to show you for some reason. Python 2 does it. Python 3 does not do this. Okay? So just ignore that U like it doesn't exist. Create a for loop. Okay. Cool. For your strings, using a for loop, you can print out each individual character in a string. You've already seen this. So thing is equal to spam for C and thing, print C. So better way to say it for letter, right? So now they want us to do it, add a second for loop so that each character in word is printed out. So I would say for character in word, print character. Or I would say letter in word. The letter is simpler, I will usually use letter. Letter in word, print letter. Let's run it, let's check it out, let's see what happens. And you got exactly what we expected that you would get, right? Spam, exclamation mark, uh, the first loop right here, and then the second loop ran and we got eggs and exclamation mark, right? That's what we expected to happen, okay? For your A, string manipulation is useful in for loops if you want to modify some content in a string. So sometimes we wanna change a string. Okay, let's see. So here, they're just simply teaching, showing you how to access each character in a word and print it out. The example prints out M the first time, A, R, B, L, E, okay? And here they show you. The comma character after our print statement means that our next print statement keeps printing on the same line. So this is a nice little trick you can do to print everything on the same line, okay? So if I go here, paste it, does this actually work in Python 3? Mm, doesn't look like it, but apparently in Python 2 it works, right? So let me check that same loop in Python 2. What? Why not? It... Okay, word is equal to marble for a car in word. Print car comma. Okay, so in um, Python 2, you can just put a comma at the end of it and then it'll print it all in the same line. Okay, what would I do to print it out separately? Well, one thing that's coming to my mind is I would turn it into a list of, list of a word. So that separates it out like this and then I'd call uh, dot join, uh, but I would say join it by one space, and then I would go like this. That's just how I would do it, because I'm cool like that, and then I can write print in front of it. And you can do it too when you're that cool. All right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> our next print statement keeps printing on the same line. Let's filter out the letter A from our sting. Do the following for each character in the phrase. Hmm, filter out the letter A from the string. So it should say bird in the hand, not a bird in the hand. Do the following for each car character in the phrase. If the character is an A or character is an A, print X instead of character. Make sure to include the trailing comma. Okay, so for character, whoops, in phrase, if character equal equal an A, here I'll do a little trick, but let's not get fancy, let's just do it simple. If the character is capital A or character is small a, the trick that I did is just make the character in small or lower case and then just check it that way or make it all in uppercase and check it that way. So it would be simpler. So if the character is either capital A, so big A or small A, uh, replace it with an X. So print X. Um, otherwise, instead of character, make sure to include the trailing comma, right? So here, we want to use it like Python 3 and include the trailing comma. And then what we want to say is print character otherwise. So, or else. 
right? If that's not the case. See, X bird in the X, H, X, N, D, right? Everywhere it sees, oh, actually in this case, they do want uh, also for us to change it to a small, uh, if it was a small A. So this is then the correct way to do it. Okay, cool, we did it, nice. All right, we just had to put the trailing commas to make sure everything was on the same line. Okay, cool, next lesson. For your list, perhaps the most useful and most common use of for loops is to go through a list. Right, we've done a lot of that, but they're gonna give us more practice, cool. On each iteration, the variable num will be the next value in the list. So the first time through, it'll be seven, then it'll be nine, then it'll be 12. So this variable here, right, we've done plenty of practice with this in our previous videos. So if you have, but just to recall, if this is the list, right, numbers is actually that list. First time num is gonna be seven, it's gonna print out seven, shoot it up into the screen, into the terminal. Then num, the variable num will be nine, it'll, say print nine, I'll shoot it out to the screen, then it'll be 12, this will be 12, I'll shoot out to the screen, I think you get the idea. Then it gets 99, I'll print it out, and after that it says the loop is over because it automatically detects it has uh, reached the end of the loop or end, end of the list. Write a second, here it says, and then the loop will exit when there are no more values in the list. Write a second for a loop that goes through the numbers, list and prints each element squared on its own line. So again, I thought we've done this, but okay, cool. Let's, it's good to do more practice. Oh, they want us to do it on a separate line. So we're gonna say for num in numbers, print num squared, okay? All of it on its own line, okay? That's what they want. So let's see, what is 99 squared? It is 9,801, which is what we get here. And then after that, we get none, which means everything is over. Let's see this for your lists. Okay, which part are we at? Step up your fours. Nice, so we just finished our video on the entire, uh, on the loops, on our, all our for loops, okay? So again, that's a great one. Practice the for loops more, okay? Use that to practice the for loops. Take this time to practice your for loops. Just like in the last section, I told you to practice the while loops. I would make this video longer, about the usual 30 minutes. However, these concepts are so key, the loops, the while loops and for loops, that I think that you need to go and practice them. One good place you can go to is w3resource.com for Python exercises, okay? And you can simply choose the data type, like kinds of exercises you want, right? So for example, do you want basic exercises, string, the ones with list? So here, I would choose these one, Python data types list 34 exercises with solutions. So you can then check the solution, simply click on the exercise and go, okay, Write a program to sum all the items in a list. Can you do that? If you can, great, write out the program. If you can't, great, also go ahead and write out the program. Then it's perfect, because now you get to practice and learn it. Only if you fail after trying at least for one hour, 30 minutes or one hour, then go and look up the answer. For me, when I was starting out programming, it would take me, I would be stuck on a problem for weeks. Okay, and I try to never almost look at the answer, which is probably not the best way to do it because you can be like pulling your hair out and going crazy. However, I get obsessive when I fall in love with something. So I just truly enjoyed it. But you know, if you start getting, you know your own frustration levels. If you start to get frustrated, go and look at the solution, it'll help you learn it. So here it is, test out your for loop knowledge here. I'm gonna stop the video right here, okay? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com. You just finished watching Code Academy Python tutorial number 21. We covered for loops. 
next video, we will be talking about dictionary and how to use for loops in dictionaries, okay? That's gonna be another important key concept. Key value pair, remember that? All right, enough of the lame jokes. This is the end of the video. Please like it or subscribe. I love you guys. I will see you in the next video. Code Academy Python tutorial number 22. Number 22, I mean number 23. That's the one you guys should get excited for.